It's quite the find. Hello friends and welcome back to Crow's Thrifty Finds. My name is Melanie. So for this week's video, we are going to talk about something that I have not discussed yet on my channel, but I do get a lot of questions about. So we're going to talk about, drum roll please, shipping. We are going to talk about just a few hacks and how I do certain parts of shipping. Now shipping, in my opinion, is not necessarily the easiest part of reselling. I always want to make sure my items get to my buyers in the same condition that they left my house in. And we can't always control what the post office does, but shipping, yes, is, is an area that I know others struggle with as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna talk about some um, different parts of shipping that I use and do. So maybe it's helpful to you, maybe some of these tips you know, maybe some of them you don't, but let's talk. So, First off, I want to talk about something that I only recently learned, and I've been a reseller for over 13 years, probably close to 14 now, and something that I just learned about. So I had somebody recently ask me, what do you do with big items? How do you ship them? And as far as packing goes, I don't. I don't, if it's a fragile item, I leave it to FedEx. <laughs> I'm sure UPS could do a good job too, but I've just always, for whatever reason, uh, gone to FedEx if I have a large item or fragile pack item. I let FedEx take care of it. Now, in the past, I've charged, you know, larger amounts of money for shipping and I've let FedEx take care of the whole thing. But, you know, it can be inconveniencing to a buyer to have to pay, you know, this grandiose amount of money to have FedEx pack and ship their item. So something I learned recently from the good folks at FedEx in my town, um, something that I didn't know that you could do, and it feels so obvious now, so maybe it's gonna be obvious to some of you, but maybe it's not gonna be obvious to all of you. Maybe it's gonna be one of those things that you think to yourself, oh, I, I, I guess I didn't think to, to look into that either. But, Here's the thing, our eBay discounts are substantial on FedEx. I know sometimes it can go up to 40% of what they normally would cost if you just walked into the shipping center and paid for it yourself. So these discounts are big. FedEx knows about this as well. And they do not discourage the eBay discount. And recently I had a large item that I shipped out and they said, you know, you should use your, your eBay discount. I said, yeah, I'd like to do that. You know, it's quite a difference in, in price, you know. So what I discovered is you can actually take a screenshot of your shipping label, you know, get the dimensions and everything from FedEx, you know, with the weight and, and you know, the dimensions of the box. And you'll be able to email the label to the store they will print your label off for you and ship it. Didn't know they would be willing to do that. To, to me, that seemed like sort of an extra service that they don't want to deal with. You know, they, I, I would imagine they would expect you to come with the label. And then maybe your, your estimation of costs, you know, isn't quite right. And, you know, eBay will, will bill you for it later uh, if you're off. But it's nice to have that service available. And... I would imagine that every FedEx shipping center does that. I don't think it's just mine. Typically, you know, it's a corporate thing. So I'm sure all the stores are doing that. Maybe they're not all talking about it, but I'd like to think that if you work with them, that they'd be able to help you that way. So, you know, you can charge your customers less for shipping and, you know, everybody wins and it's convenient, you know, one less... One less label to print out is always nice, right? So just something to know about, something to ask about. I would imagine maybe UPS does this as well. I just couldn't speak on it because I use FedEx personally. Um, I have shipped with UPS when it's cheaper, but when it comes to big packs, fragile packs, they're going to FedEx and I'm having them take care of it. 
you know, if I'm if I'm mailing something that has a strong chance of being broken, you know, a Christmas village or some, you know, mug sets or something, you know, it's going to FedEx. <laughs> so just good for you all to know that hack because I just discovered this recently. So thank you to the manager at FedEx for enlightening me on that. <laughs> hack number two. Let's talk about shipping supplies. I try to get as much supplies for free as possible. I recycle old supplies. I use Amazon envelopes. And how many complaints have I had about reused supplies in my 13 years as a reseller? Zero, absolutely zero. So do not worry if you reuse supplies, it's, totally fine to do as far as as I know as well as far as I'm concerned I should say it is a, you know it's fine to do you're not going to get in trouble at all it's just you know some people prefer to use new shipping supplies give their customers the newest stuff but like I said I've never ever ever received a complaint about a recycled bubble mailer or anything. And I don't know about you all, but a lot of times I shop on eBay. So, you know, you get the eBay boxes and, and stuff like that. And, and then it, it looks just perfect because it's, you know, it's from eBay. So, so yeah, it's, it's definitely okay to use supplies that are already used. You know, you just want to make sure the condition's okay. You know, if a box went through the mail, it may not be in great condition by the time it gets to you. But if it seems still sturdy, um, just, you know, double check. And if it seems safe to proceed, go for it, because I don't think this is a big deal to people. And there's all kinds of levels of eBay sellers, you know, so there's a lot of people that ship really terribly, you know, that are new and just don't know what to do. And, you know, I, I imagine most of the people watching this channel, you know, will not be using, you know, microwave dinner boxes to ship something. Do not do that. <laughs> But if it's something that's designed to go through the postal service, that should be just fine. And just a little tip as far as packing paper, because packing paper is very expensive. Paper bags. Paper bags work great. I have an addiction to DoorDash. I'm a little embarrassed about it. I do it way more than I should. But you know what? I get Qdoba a lot. And every time you get DoorDash with Qdoba, they give you those nice... Uh, very thick paper bags with the handles. And I use uh, Qdoba bags all the time for packing paper in my packages. Never had a complaint. Of course, now that I'm saying this, watch me get a, a complaint all of a sudden, but they're not greasy. They're not gross. Like it's just paper reused. I, I flip it over to the logo on the inside. I crumple it up and it's done. And it, it works fantastic. It's thick really good. So yeah, any, really any kind of paper bags, you get paper bags at the grocery store, you know, that, that works too. But yeah, just make use of those paper bags that you get and save yourself money because packing paper is not cheap. So yeah, I, I go dumpster diving for boxes. I, I do all kinds of things to make sure that my shipping supply costs are very minimal. Um, I do buy bubble wrap, um, from American Bubble Boy because I find that they're pretty affordable. Um, but really, for the most part, if I can get it for free, I will. Next, I am going to talk about Franken boxes. What can you do with Franken boxes? So we were just talking about free stuff, right? So the post office does offer free priority mailboxes. And what some people don't know is that you can alter these priority mailboxes if you need to. So say the box is too big and you need to make it smaller. That is okay. You just need to be careful that they're not the flat rate USPS boxes because those need to stay the way they are as far as I know. Um, but if they're just the regular priority mailboxes, you can alter those however you want. So you can go smaller or you can also go bigger. So if you have a very long item, you can combine the boxes together. And I do this a lot when I have a large item. So 
Franken boxes are appropriate. And, and a lot of people use um, box scorers that you can get to alter the size of boxes. I personally do not own a box scorer. I feel like as many years as I've been reselling, I probably should. And I keep saying, I'm going to get a box scorer because I think that'd be handy. I just use scissors and I cut. <laughs> and they're not always the prettiest. I'm sure if I had a box scorer, it would be much prettier. But I, I, I always make my own Franken boxes just with scissors. <laughs> so it's doable. But a lot of people don't realize you can you can alter and Frankenbox with US mail priority boxes and you absolutely can. So I Frankenbox all kinds of boxes, but you you know some people are worried because they're USPS mail. Do they need to stay the same way they are? They do not. And yeah, USPS boxes are great um, when you have items that are those sizes. Uh, and the sizes can kind of change. Um, as as it go as time goes, sometimes they stop making certain sizes. So I I'd advise you if there's a size you like to order large quantities in case they disappear. <laughs> Can't hurt, right? And last but not least, a lot of seasoned resellers have these um, label makers. It's just a nice little thing to have, a nice little shortcut. You're not paying money for ink if you're running things through your printer. I think it's cost efficient. It's handy. It's quick to use. A lot of people swear by their by their Rolo printers and, and, you know, the big name brands. But I actually have, it's right next to me, a, well, it's going to be backwards, but a GOC. <laughs> it's what my, what my husband bought me for label makers. And let me tell you, I'm pretty sure it came from Amazon, and I think it's one of the lower end ones, but this thing has been a beast. It is perfect. So save yourself some money, and you don't need to go with the huge big name brands. This thing does everything that those other brands do. It's just cheaper. So I'm giving them free advertising, but let me tell you, I have not had one misprint. I have not had one issue ever. The only challenge was getting it started up initially, but I think I would have struggled no matter what the printer was. I think that's just me and technology and not having things just right. But there's so much to talk about with shipping. It's so many things to know, but I figured I'd cover just these few topics today. I want you all to take a moment, if you have not, to hit that like button on this video and I'd really love for you to subscribe to my channel. It really, really helps. If you've been watching a few times and you haven't subscribed, it would help me immensely if you could subscribe to my video. And that's going to be it for this week. So again, my name is Melanie. This is Crow's Thrifty Finds. I hope you all have a wonderful Labor Day weekend, and I'll see you next week.